All right, hello everybody. So today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, instead of just going over like CC decks and gameplay, I'm going to be kind of analyzing my current blitz for Vin and uh, using that as a starting point to get into CC. Uh, I've had this video requested a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we'll show off some uh, blitz games of Vin just to kind of. Uh, show like a baseline of how how the deck runs um, it's a little bit different it's not too different but it is slightly different all right so to start off here's the blitz deck we have husk and the uh dyadic carapace as our two body pieces uh where tunic in the cc version is not used in the blitz version uh the reason for this is blitz is generally so quick that you're not really going to get much value out of tunic uh you might get like one or two uh resources from it but sacrificing the block potential just for those two resources i don't really think is worth it um and many a times if you run tunic you're actually not even going to get a resource out of it because by the time that you would need the resource you've already had to block with it um so i tend to avoid it and on the same the other side of the same coin because the games are so quick husk doesn't really do much damage to you um you will almost always get a total of three or four value out of husk um at the least so that's that's important um Scepter of Pain is not in the Blitz version. Um, I feel like a majority of players in Blitz will run AB because it's so much easier to just kind of burn people out through rune chants that they recognize I have to run AB um, and generally will not let you get through a Scepter of Pain activation. Uh, so I just use the Grimoire as my default. Uh, additionally... This is this one's a little bit more uh, up in the air, I would say, between Grasp and Vexing. Uh, in the Blitz version, I have both. Actually, in both versions, I have both. However, Vexing, I think I play more in Blitz because the turns are so impactful that if you're behind on Rune Chance, you almost have to send something every turn or at least, like, be close to sending something every turn, like find something to do with it. It makes our turn one a little bit weaker unless we break vexing um, because having one rune chant doesn't really do anything for us, but you can just break vexing if you really want to, if you're going second. So I think it's just a better option, um, mainly for the fact that it gives you the extra... Uh, it gives you the extra playability of bursting versus like the slower gameplay. Losing three health and blitz does kind of suck, but overall, I think vexing I like more. However, like I said, I have both. So we scroll down. The boards obviously, main boards obviously look very similar. Um, I cut reduced rune chant in the blitz version. Um, you can see they don't exactly line up. I cut reduced rune chant. Um, it, I mean, it's a good card. It's it's great. It probably should be in the sideboard. Currently, Art of War is in the sideboard right now. Um, I'm trying to pretty much make my Blitz deck aggro as hell and just kind of try to send as much as I can as quickly as I can. Um, so reduce doesn't really fall into that game plan especially when you have less cards to work with. So I I cut that. I'm not entirely settled on it yet, but currently that's that's out. And then let's look for other differences. Art of War is not in the Blitz version except in the sideboard. And the other difference being that we have cut Oblivion out of the Blitz deck. That is something that 
potentially could be put back in. Um, I think that there is less time to set up in Blitz, obviously, but with the inclusion of Will Hand being your go-to, I think Oblivion does have a really solid case. Uh, I think that would be probably personal preference. I might end up putting it back in, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and then Envelop Blue is in Blitz. The reason for this is we do have a lot of si like situations where we're going to end on zero rune chance. And like I said, we need we need to be sending an attack pretty much every turn. We need to at least pull cards or else we're just going to get run over. So that's pretty important. I would say definitely definitely put the envelops in. The reds are already in, but the blues are in in the blitz version where they're not in the CC. I've been messing around with CC with Jack-O-Lantern. I think that it's pretty good. Uh, you won't be seeing me play it in any of the games today because it's currently bugged on Talishar. Uh, it is treated as an attack action, so it actually eats your rune chance. Um, so it's don't don't try testing it on Talishar because you'll be disappointed. Uh, I have one pummel. And I have Balance of Justice instead of Ebonfold. Um, I think Balance of Justice honestly should probably be in the CC list. Uh, probably removing more like Shadow Verser. I don't I don't bring that in too often. Maybe Nebula Blade because Nebula Blade is only in here for Dromai and Dromai is leaving soon. Um, so I'll probably put Balance and Justice in that. But Ebonfold is not needed because Ebonfold is only there for Kano, and Kano is LL'd in Blitz. So looking at the deck lists, they're obviously both pretty similar. Um, since this is a kind of comparison and starting point when you like going into Blitz, I'll kind of say what I think is important for the Blitz deck and the CC deck separately, like which one if you need to prioritize. But I will focus mainly on the Blitz cards that are most expensive that are used in CC. Um, so like for instance, the equipment, it's mainly equipment, first of all. Let's let's I'm gonna say that. Um the carrion husk com like blitz compared to CC. Again, depending on your focus, I think Carrion Husk is so much better in Blitz than it is in CC. Um, so if you're looking to primarily focus on Blitz, I think that would be a priority piece. But if you're mainly looking to focus on CC, you can just get a Dyadic Carapace over this. Um, you're essentially losing three health in the long run if you're using your Husk. Um, if you count Husk's blood debt as zero, which it won't be, you'll take damage from it. So the gap between Carrion Husk and Dyadic Carapace does get smaller. Husk allows you to block out something like a CNC um, and protect Arsenal just for the price of the equipment itself rather than cards out of hand. So you have a stronger turn returning. Um, but I feel like that being the biggest like niche case is not really warranted to pay the like value of it the cost of the card um if you're just looking for playing cc um moving on though i think that brown and spellbound creepers are probably absolutely like must buys um especially in Blitz and in CC, actually. Uh, CC, I think that Creepers in CC and Blitz probably fill about the same role. You get one or two out of it, and you and then you block with it. Um, they're not... You're not going to be keeping these up all game. It's just, it doesn't happen. So you're kind of valuing it based on what can I do with a turn that 
I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. Um, and you can see this, like, for instance, if you have an attack in Banish, let's say you have a Deathly Whale in Banish, you have no rune chance, um, or maybe you have one, and you want to play it, and you have another attack in hand, you could block with an attack and then creepers out or read the runes. So you have either the Deathly Whale or the Widespread Annihilation uh, off of an attack on their turn. So you don't have to really worry about the potential risk of not having a rune chance. The biggest, the biggest thing is honestly, Spellbound Creepers read the runes, I feel like. Uh, Revel in Runeblood does also turn on turns. So for instance, if you have a Deathly Whale and a Widespread Annihilation and Banish, after the start of your turn, you can banish whatever. As long as you can play the Deathly Whale, you can play Beseech, paying the life if you wanted to. Um, you could attack with the Deathly Whale and then instant out Revel in Runeblood because it has go again. It gives you an action point. You have four, uh, actually six, rune chance because of the Deathly Whale, and then you can just send the Widespread Annihilation. Um, I think that Creepers is almost invaluable in both decks. You, you need Creepers. I think that's probably the most one of the most important cards in the deck. And then Crown, I think, is probably the second most. I think you should get Crown no matter which deck you're focusing on, Blitz or CC. However, I think Grasp is probably more important for CC than it is for Blitz. So if you're kind of like looking to reduce costs a little bit, you can probably hold off on Grasp. You can just get Quill Hand. And then... I think Shadow Puppetry is very important. Definitely should get Shadow Puppetries. I think Revels are very important. Get Revels. Art of Wars... You can kind of, uh, you can kind of hold off on Art of War. Art of War is not a huge player, I don't think. I think it's good, but it's not mandatory. Um, and then all of the other cards, honestly, are not super expensive. But if you're looking at the deck lists, they're obviously very similar. And most of these cards, I would not want to compromise on. Uh, there aren't really anything that is equivalent or at least like somewhat equivalent in power. So th as far as the main boards go, you pretty much, if you're starting with Blitz, get this main board, get this 40. And I'll go ahead and post this uh, for anyone who is curious so you can, you can look at it. But I would say that this main board is a must-have. The equipment, like I said, some of it you can kind of avoid at first, but the main board is definitely what you need. So, so if I had to say what you should get in an order, I'd say you should get everything in this main board. You get this 40. Then get a Spellbound Creepers as the next big piece then get a crown of providence then a quill hand then a dyadic carapace then a husk and then a grasp balance i think is pretty good I, I don't think that it's like super mandatory and it also is at a high price point right now so if you're looking for like a budget way to play i would recommend not getting this at this point Maybe wait for it to come down or until you're more solidified in the game. Although it is very beneficial because it is a generic. So you can play it in any deck. Um, obviously, a lot of our equipment is either Shadow or Runeblade focused. So those things like you can't really use for anything else. Um, so that is something to consider. Like, for instance, if you have another deck that you want to play and you know that it needs crown, maybe just buy crown first, 
just so you because you know you're gonna play this other deck. But other than that, I think that this Blitz deck is a really good starting point. Uh, compared to the CC version, the only major um difference between the two as far as like price points is the tunic the tunic being in the cc deck is quite a large jump um but it's not it's not needed for the blitz deck but i think it is definitely needed for the cc one the same with grasp or that's not as much of a big jump but both of these pieces are super important for cc with a less important focus on blitz so these could be like the last two pieces you pick up but if you're planning to play cc you need them so i think though that's kind of a little bit of a rundown as you can see and i've probably said it already the decks are super similar they function a little bit differently because the Blitz version, you're going to play much more aggressively. But as far as the card pool goes, they're pretty similar. So start out trying to fill out your Blitz deck, and it will build most of your CC deck for you. Um, so we're going to go over, and we're going to do some games. I'm going to do it in the same kind of style, where these are pre-recorded games, and I'm going to kind of talk through what I was say thinking at the time and what I'm thinking now, and we'll kind of see if I misplayed anything, and I'll kind of try to give some insight on what is done differently in CC versus Blitz. All right, so here we have our first game, uh, we're versus Kasai. Into Kasai, I think that I want Dyadic Carapace. Uh, this was an old list where I did have the reduced rune chance, but I think you run the Carapace because you're trying to block out swords a lot more. Um, and the attack reactions are really what gives the swords the huge power boosts. So if you're going to block with a husk, they're going to just see that and say, okay, well, then I'm not going to buff it. I'm going to buff my next attack or the attack first attack next turn or something like that. So husk is not it for Kasai. I, I feel like husk is not it for warriors in general. Okay, so it's turn zero, they played two Sifts. I think I probably just block with a Mob Skies. It's probably just going to be Saber Saber. Yep. Okay, so I'm thinking block with, what is this, five now? With no floating and no cards in hand. Yep, so block with the Demigon, block with the Mob Skies. We're going to try to keep a Mob Skies to maybe Arsenal, uh, but we'll see what we get depending on this turn, or the, this next turn. So we took one. Okay. So I'm thinking probably banish the Deathly Delight. No, we probably banish the Vantom and play the Shadow Puppetry, is my thought. Play the Shadow Puppetry to try to get the flail or try and then try to flail oh we're just gonna go to the mobs guys okay we're gonna go straight for it um this person does not have a b so this is gonna be just kind of a make rune chance and try to kill them with that kind of style of game i think that we want to throw the vantom wraith because if they let that hit With the mob skies, that's huge for us. I can still flail or I can just save it and I decide to save it. That was the best decision because now I have a widespread annihilation. I can. I think what I want to do here though is I want to banish the Vantom Wraith and then use the widespread annihilation for the Deathly Delight. Oh no, I'm just gonna block. Hmm. Okay, yeah. I'm thinking I'm just gonna take it. Because we're gonna probably use the widespread annihilation for the Deathly Delight, and we're just gonna come in for um I guess not. 
I was thinking come in for the two attacks with the go again and then keep the revel in arsenal. Oh, I see. That was I forgot it was a shadow puppetry. I was thinking it was a um a mob skies. Yeah, so we're taking the card out of their hand. If that was a Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. Because I was thinking if that was a rune gate. Yes, this was much better than what I was thinking. So now I can use the revel. They lose a card. I can revel and then play the deathly delight. So I still get the two attacks. Yeah, and they're they're going to one. So as you can see, if your opponent doesn't have AB, um, they're in a lot of trouble. This was turn three that I won. And it was enabled by kind of thinking through a weird line that I honestly, I, at this point, I wasn't even thinking about. It's, it's much easier for me to uh, concentrate in the game and see the lines in the game. There are a couple times where I see them afterwards, but here was probably the best case scenario. I think if anything... I probably should have blocked with Deathly Delight and sent Phantom because I already knew I was sending 12 here between the two cards and then 8 between the rune chance. So I'm sending a 20 damage turn versus a 19 damage turn. Um, the life gain probably doesn't matter because I'm sending so much damage anyway. They'd have to just block with their whole hand. Um... I'm not really sure why they didn't just block with their whole hand and just took a shit ton of damage. Like, they could have just blocked here. They had the block, but they chose not to. I think they were probably just too far behind and were frustrated. But, yeah, so those are the kind of turns that we can have where we just do their threaten their entire life uh, off of next to nothing like we had the rune chance because they didn't block out the mob skies if they don't block out mob skies we just accept that as free i believe if they blocked the mob skies that turn would have been entirely different that would have turned into probably i would have attacked with flail off of the uh mob skies and the um Phantom Wraith. They probably would have just let it through because obviously they didn't want to block with anything from hand. So I get one rune chant and then I probably just keep the whole hand and do as I was saying where I'll banish uh, probably the... I don't know. Probably the Phantom Wraith. Banish the Phantom Wraith. Play the Shadow Puppetry. Probably pay the life. Yeah, because we're going to get it. I guess it wouldn't matter. Yeah, it wouldn't matter if we paid the life because we're going to be gaining off of uh, the Deathly Delight anyway. And they don't have AB, so we're not benefiting at all from paying the life. But Banish the Vanum Wraith, attack... Banish the Vanum Wraith, attack with the Vanum Wraith, because we'll be at two from the Flail last turn and then the Rune Chain at the start of this turn. And then use the widespread to send the Deathly Delight Arsenal to Revel. So it would have been a very different turn if they didn't hit, let us hit with the Mob Skies. But since they did, we did so much more. So yeah, if you're ever playing in the mirror, do not let Mob hit. All right, here is an Azalea game. We got first. We love going first. It's much weaker uh when compared to the grasp if you have vexing to go first because you can't just bank an extra rune chant but we were able to bank a shadow puppetry so we have a go again source i'm thinking oh read in the ledger lace this is not dominated just for eight This honestly just might be good to 
Let me let me pause it so I can talk through what I'm thinking now. So we have a Van Wraith and Banish. We'll go to two rune chance. Probably send. Probably banish the Deathly Delight. Use a Shadow Puppetry with the Vanum Wraith. They do have a B, so I pay for the Shadow Puppetry. S send the Vanum Wraith for seven. If it doesn't hit, we already have another attack to follow up between the Vexing and the Deathly Delight, and the Deathly Delight gains us back to back up to. So if I were to do that, I probably want to block. Honestly, I think that I would have a huge turn because I already have the Shadow Puppetry to block Carrion Husk Crown and just hope that it's not a pump. Because, yeah, a pump would murder me right now. The other option is to kind of save the crown and block with something else. But I think I want to always use a husk here. Okay, yeah, I was thinking through it. Maybe block with a shadow puppetry since I already have one and then bank the envelop. No, just using the envelop. Okay. Nope, never mind. <laughs> I'm just showing them my whole hand here. I think the best option right now would probably be crown husk. But I think I wanted to save the crown in case that there was another red. I mean, I don't I don't hate that. I'm not sure if I think it's the best, but I don't hate it. I should have paid off of this. Unless I'm planning to send the Vantom Wraith from hand, keeping uh Deathly Delight in Banish. That might actually be a good play too. Because then at least I have an attack to follow up with. And I keep the Vexing. That's probably the best option actually. Let's see what's off the top. Funeral Moon. That's huge. Want that. Probably just play. Yeah. Because my other option was I could also have played the Envelop and then played the Funeral Moon and then sent the Deathly Whale, but I think just keeping that one in Banish, now I have an attack for next turn. Codex. Ooh. Oh, no, did it. Meditate? They could have codexed. I think that was wrong. I think they should have just codexed a, uh, codex something back. But this is just giving me such a strong turn. So I'm attacking with the Deathly Delight. If I hit, I can send the Deathly Whale. If it doesn't hit, I can just flail. Probably bank the uh, Yellow Mauve. They're blocking. See, this puts them at the exact position that they were last turn. I'm not sure why they didn't just do this last turn. Because he gets a red in the ledger. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. I think it was probably a misplay. Been setting this for eight again. Um, I have no rune chance. I'll go to one, and then I can break vexing. Probably block six. Mean. Brown, yeah, okay. Bank another Deathly Whale. I don't need that blue. I 
I probably should sink the blue mob. For a red mob. I mean, that's perfect. Banish the Deathly Whale. Probably play the red mob. Because if I can hit with this Deathly Whale... Oh. I'm thinking if I can hit, then I have three rune chance anyway, because I can break chain. So that's probably best. And then bank the red mob. And then I sent the blue with the two rune chance because I wanted to use it as a break point. But because, like, they could just block with two for the red deathly. Um, I used the flail just to get the extra rune chant. Basically, pay life, get rune chant. So we go to three on this banish. I'm banishing the widespread annihilation. I play the red deathly whale or the red modern skies. I play the red deathly whale. I play revel in rune blood and then I played widespread annihilation. So I think I think here I blocked with creepers. Yeah, I don't think I should have. I think I should have just taken it um, and then taken the four damage. But actually, hmm. Take f an extra four. Just, that would just be take five. So I'd be down to. Be down to seven. Yeah, but saving creepers, I think, would probably be more worth it. So I think if I were to go back, I would probably not block with creepers. They're just letting it hit. Okay. So we have a bajillion rune chance. Send eight rune chance and six damage. You're losing a card out of hand. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So it didn't matter that I didn't, or that I blocked the creepers. Again, if you, the rule is, if you see a red mob skies, block it. Um, but don't tell any non-Vincet players that. They, they shouldn't know that. If you're a non-Vincet player, forget what I said. Just don't block the red mobs. But I think if he, I mean, if he blocked, I still revel to send widespread. So I'm still guaranteeing the last card out of his hand. And he's probably taking... I mean, I would assume that he just blocks with the last card, so or pitches it to Rune Chance. So, unless these are all two blocks, maybe that's what it is, or one of them's two block. So he wouldn't be able to block unless he blocked with his whole hand. I still think that's like the play, but in that case, block with the hand. I revel and send widespread. Four damage through arcane goes down to three and then can only block three. So I think I had it either way. I don't, if, if there was any two blocks in their hand, I had it. If there were two, three blocks, they played it wrong. But it, I think it was pretty determined at that point. But yeah, so like Vin can do some crazy numbers with revel and read the runes into multiple attacks it's it's amazing so we'll go to, we'll go ahead and go to the next one I, poor azalea all right i know where this is like our third game but uh these blitz games are super quick so we're just gonna do a bunch more than we do with cc playing against og ko ko and he goes first again husk this is something I probably should have brought Balance of Justice into. Because if he starts hitting the crazy, um, like, Blood Rush Bellow turns, they can get out of control super quick. Okay, so he's going to Intimidate. He rolls a 1, which immediately breaks the Skull Crushers. And I can block with a single card. 
Unfortunately, the bounding was banished. I wish that the widespread was banished. I could have blocked the bounding, but it turned out okay. I think we break the vexing. Play Shadow Puppetry, paying one. Send the Deathly Whale. He doesn't have a B. So Deathly Whale's coming for seven. Let's see what we get off the top. Oh, nope. Okay, blocking out the seven. Then we send the Bounding. And then we just arsenal the mobs, guys. This doesn't come in as a breakpoint because it wasn't played for banish, but it still does damage. And it still threatens. But it's taking a card. Oh. oh, interesting. So they can choose whether or not to wager after they play the card. So it was halved instead of 14. We're threatened by three. Because they're not wagering, I'm not really concerned. I'll banish the widespread destruction. They have an arsenal and no AB. Probably, yep, just play the incantation just for shit gigs. Play the mob skies. Because if uh if it hits, we get the extra rune chant, which just turns into an extra damage, but we're gonna flail probably either way. It's only one rune chant, so a lot of times people won't value it as much as being like the red mob skies for three. Break the chain, lose their arsenal, and then send a flail, and they're blocking it. I don't know why they didn't block with scabs, but that's fine for us. Banish, probably, yeah, the Vantum, just for the extra damage. Um, okay, so here's where it can get a little bit interesting. So we have Mob Skies, Blue Mob Skies, we have Red Envelop, we have the Revel, and we have a van two Vantum Wraiths. Well, a Vantum Wraith and then the Death of Delight. Um, so we have a couple options. One of them that we could do if, well, so, okay. So if envelop was actually like a zero cost, we could creepers envelop, but like, obviously it's not a zero cost and we're not on tunic. So do we have a two attack turn? We can play mob skies. Attack with Vantum, that eats our rune chance. And then we have two resources. I could, I could uh, play out the Revel and just attack with Flail for extra damage. And I think that might be the best option. Here's where I'm kind of deciding between using creepers, trying to figure out if I had the resources. That's one thing about playing envelop that does hurt. Uh, a lot of times we avoid pitching, but because it costs one and we're not on tunic, we don't get to avoid pitching. It's just something we have to accept. I think he just blocks. I'm not sure why he blocked with strapping and okay. So this is going to go to one rune chant. I can revel to go to five, and then I can flail threatening lethal. And because he doesn't have any AB, next turn I just win, as long as I can keep a card. Actually, I don't even need to keep a card, I just win next turn. Here, they should have blocked with those scabs instead. Okay. Because <laughs> the scabs are battle-worn, not temper. They don't break. Yeah, so we just need to survive. You would roll one or more dice this turn and said roll that many plus one. The lowest is ignored. 
Okay, so this might get a little dangerous. Scabs, they get two action points because they rolled a five and a one. Barkbone, they rolled a two and a one. They get one resource. It's 14 wagering. How much block do I have? I mean, I block with Husk, probably. Husk. Deathly, Funeral. Oh, oh I forgot about the crown. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Probably get rid of Arsenal with the crown effect. Just for an extra blocking card. Seven, fourteen. 14. Huh. I mean, both of those would have been rounded up anyway, I think. Or no, it's five and six go up. So I took 10 damage there. I probably should have just blocked with the Deathly Delight, but I wasn't thinking that one through. I knew that it wasn't going to kill me, um, but either way... I could have blocked with it, saved three life. My incantation makes me rune chant anyway and flail because he doesn't have AB, and that's a win. Uh, so yeah, AB is very important in Blitz. Remember that. Remember that. All right, now we have a Prism. I think Prism, we take Husk also. She has too many six with the Herald. Um, and we're kind of going to try to avoid giving her too much soul. I mean, this is OG Prism. I'm not sure what, how many, like, Heralds she's going to play versus just Auras. So, that's... And a turn zero ALS. That feels bad. Hmm. Probably just banish... The Deathly Whale and send the Flail. Next turn, I can just break Vexing. I'll Arsenal probably Shadow Puppetry. Either Shadow Puppetry or Envelop, but I think Shadow Puppetry is more important to Arsenal. They do have AB. I mean, that's kind of huge. I can, depending on what they send, I can banish Deathly Whale and then play Shadow Pub Tree, Break Vexing. Oh, that's good too. Yeah. So block with Widespread Ruin and just break. They played Mage Master. Um, so we don't have to worry about an extra action point. So this is just gone. So banish the Deathly Whale, play the Shadow Pub Tree, pay the one, break Vexing, go to three Rune Chance, and then probably blue Deathly Whale. Oh, okay. We're just going to put the six out. The, I was kind of torn between whether I wanted to put the f up, put it as a five or a six. Um... But with Envelop, which I'm going to do next, it puts the blue Deathly Whale at a 7, which is more awkward to block, I feel like, than an 8. Because an 8 can be 2, 3s, and a 2. Um, We hit the Funeral Moon. <laughs> so... I was planning on playing Envelop. Which I'm going to do anyway, I guess. I think I'm just going to bank the uh, bank the extra rune chain after the Funeral Moon. Or after the Deathly Whale. So I'll be starting at 3. Oasis. Okay, so you're taking 3. 
blocking two. Yeah, I feel like, oh, well, it was, I guess, Odorath doesn't block. So, seven. I'm going to take seven. Oof. Still no soul for them. And then we'll play the Funeral Moon. So we're starting at three. They have no turn. All right, banish the Demigon. This is not something we really want to see at this point. Um, probably just put out mob skies, just put pressure. We'll attack with the bounding, and then we'll attack with flail. Banking. Probably shadow puppetry and arsenal. And the ALS. It's fine. That's both ALS is gone, at least. So we'll just flail at this point. I mean, we're losing the rune chance, but at least we have a card in Banish still. So then they're going to take the, some of the rune chance. They only had a sink. And then I'm thinking Arsenal Shadow Puppetry, but it doesn't really matter because I'm pretty much keeping both of them anyway. Okay. Librarian. I was like, wait, what? Whenever you create a spectral shield, put a less encounter. There are three or more. You get a spec. So this is awkward. Um, I think, yeah, I'm thinking just play that. Mob skies. Banish the widespread. Play the Deathly Whale with the Mob Skies. I had to rethink this. Because I can send the Deathly Whale, and then if the Mob Skies hits, I can send the Widespread. Or if it doesn't hit, then I send Flail, and I sit, play Widespread next turn. But now I have two banked in... Banish if I do it that way. I still think it's probably the best decision to do it this way. I mean, I guess I can send the um, bounding either way for threatening the extra four. I think we just see how he blocks. And then kind of go from there. They took the one. One thing I like about doing my videos this way is I kind of get like a second opinion in myself where I might have seen something now that I didn't see originally or I might see something originally that I don't see now. And here was where I was deciding between Flail and Bounding. I think Flail is the better option right now. But threatening half their life on the Bounding is nice. I lose one Rune Chant, essentially, by not sending the Flail. Because I think they always block Flail. So I'm just losing the extra Rune Chant off of the Deathly Whale's close from me losing life. Right, yeah, because I didn't I didn't play another shadow non attack. Yeah, see that would that was good. So I'm glad that I sent that instead. I'm surprised they didn't let one through, but it is what it is. So we have two banked right now. Play the mob skies. Yeah, play the mob skies, and then I can send probably the Vantum. And then I can use the envelop with creepers to instant read the runes to then spread the wide or send the widespread ruin. Making three spectral shields. I would think that makes. Oh, it's once per turn. Okay. I was thinking that would put three counters on that. But anyway. So it makes three. So essentially goes up three lives. So you're at 11. 
but I'm threatening a 18 damage turn. Nine and nine because of three prismatic shields and then the um or th th wow three rune chance for each attack and then six on each attack. I'm not sure what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, soul shield. So you are at nine life right now. And I'm sending nine. So you have to relinquish the card in your hand. And they just scoop. I think this was what the third turn or yeah, third or fourth turn in a row that they didn't have a turn. So I think they were just over it. But. I mean, sending like read the runes spellbound creepers is such a powerful combination. That's why I was saying, like, if you need to choose uh, equipment that you need to get first, if you're on a budget, Creepers is the first one you get. You get Creepers if you're playing Runeblade. I don't think Briar used Creepers, and I don't think Chain did either. But the two current ones are on Creepers, 100%. So keep that in mind. One block, but... It's it's really the uh, instant capability. So another one falls to Vincent. And here is our last game. We are going to be against a Benji. Benji is tough. Um, against Benji, you want to have the extra blocking. So Dyadic Carapace, uh, Grasp. We become a lot more defensive in our armor because without it, the unblockable damage just kind of kills us. So I think the best option is probably get rid of the Vantum and then Arsenal the Deathly Delight. I still have Crown to get it out, but at least now I have an extra Rune Chant. So this is just vanilla damage. He broke the fist or the vest. Um, three, probably just yeah, widespread annihilation. I'm not playing it next turn. The meeps, we don't want them to draw a card. And I want to get that card out of Arsenal. Destruction. If it hits, it gets go again. I think that's not important enough to block. It's just vanilla damage to me. Because they can just scale or snaps anyway. Bipox we block because it's basically a five attack. Okay, so Banish, I think, is probably the Deathly Delight. Yep. And then probably play in Vela. Using the widespread destruction, pay the one life, play Deathly Delight or Deathly Whale with Mob Skies. I think that's probably the right play. However, I could also instant the envelop and I would save the mob skies and I would still get to play everything out, but I wouldn't be saving rune chance for next turn. Actually, no, I think I like that more. I think play. Oh, whoa, what am I doing? They don't have an arsenal. What? Yeah, so this was wrong. Okay. I don't like this. I think I messed up here. I should have done what I originally said, where I should have played the Deathly Whale first, 
then use the widespread destruction and creepers to instant out the um whatever it's called uh envelop and then i could play deathly delight i guess in this sense i still keep rune chance like i still end with one maybe that is better but i'm not sure We want to try to tear cards out of their hand as much as we can. Yeah, see, so it wouldn't have mattered. Um, five. Honestly, I think we just take the five. Take the five because we're going to try to bounding. We're going to try to mob skies bounding. Read the runes, bank the envelop, or we just block and then play read the runes and envelop, or, and then bank envelop if we keep it. No, yeah, I think that was right, blocking the E strike. I'm like intently watching, like, do I, do I pass this? I did, I guess I do. Yep, snaps it because it was a draw card. At least we don't have to deal with snaps. Uh, three attack. We can block that with bounding. I guess I just decided to send the damage. I'm not sure why. Yeah, I'm not sure why they Zephyr Needle break, or like with the Flick Knives, because they didn't attack with Zephyr Needle. Um, They could have essentially gotten another attack in. I probably should have saved the 5 life and just played Read the Runes. I don't think that they have AB at this point. Oh yeah, they do, they have the Lantern. Um, or I guess I could flail. And then instant read the runes. Oh, I'm trying to threaten lethal. Okay. Because now we're going to four rune chance and then the one. I know that they can survive at one. Because they had the extra floating. Honestly, I think. I think it probably was better to save the read the runes until after the flail. And then I would at, at the very least end at three. Okay, so I have three block left. Two go again. They can't follow it up. I think we might take this. Because it is just vanilla two damage. Now. We have... I can banish widespread ruin and then make a rune chain off of grasp. But then that doesn't, so then I'm at two cards left without doing anything. If I banish deathly whale, I cannot get the rune chance. Yes, yeah, I should. I'm not sure why I did it like this. Why I didn't play the widespread ruin, but I don't think it matters. 
Oh, I think it was actually because I was contemplating paying the life, and I decided not to. Is the extra life, I don't really want to go down to three. Because the lower I am, the worse it gets, obviously, because they have unblockable damage, essentially. Unblockable. Okay, so they're blocking. We love seeing them block with spring tidings. This would put them down to three. I have no rune chance banked though. Um, block with ancestral empowerment. We love to see that. I think it would have been better if they went down to three. What is it? Oh, it's like the next one gets go again or something, right? Yeah. Again, another vanilla two. I think I just take it. Unless I'm worried about creepers dying, because I don't want to lose that extra block. So I can get rid of widespread. I can put widespread ruin and banish. Play Deathly Whale with the mobs, guys. And I had widespread ruin in arsenal. Yeah. So I go down to three. I think I banish widespread ruin. I. Yep. Oh, no. Okay. That's not what I was thinking. Play the mob skies. Attack with widespread ruin. Oh, because I don't want to go down to two. I want to avoid that if possible. So I am IP'd here because I didn't play the Deathly Whale. I think going down to two was correct. Yeah, okay, so I shouldn't have made the rune chant. I should have just banished the widespread ruin and then uh used the three uh, the three cost or the three resource mob skies for the deathly whale i think that was more correct um i want to play this funeral moon but i can't only block with one i think i block with the rune blood incantation Go to one? Ooh, that's dangerous, because if they have a turn. No, I think what I probably do is I probably block Deathly Whale Grasp, Banish Funeral Moon, and then use Mob Skies. Oh, okay, I'm doing it. So I wanted the Funeral Moon to play off of the Deathly Whale. Or to play into the Deathly Whale. And then I guess I Mob Skies? Like this, I'm not sure I like this. Because I'm at one. Any two attack gets me. Unless there's something I'm not seeing. Yeah, because any two attack kills me. As long as they can block out the six damage, I'm okay. But ninjas do have a lot of twos.
Just blocking with sensor. Oh, he has sink below. Ooh. All right, let's see. Because I can block the sensor. Oh, it's a one. Ooh. If that was a two, I lost. Just right there. Wow. Okay. All right, so I'm at one rune chant. Banish Deathly Whale. Play grass. That and that, and then just send the Beseech for Beseech Deathly Whale for three and uh, eight. So 11 damage. They generally only have two blocks, so I can assume that they are blocking six. I mean, uh, eight. The extra three would just go over. Unless that, if that Ride the Tailwind was a blue. Oh my gosh, if that was a blue, they live. Wow. Okay, so I got super lucky on there. Um, this turn, where they had to block and didn't have any two attacks. Wait, no, they played it wrong. Yeah, this was on them, actually. They could have won. So if they had blocked the, with the blue, used the blue for the rune chance, they're at four. They block sensor sync. And then they send hurl, and I die. So they misplayed there. They actually had me dead on board. Um. But this turn, I also think, where was it? I think it was this one. Yeah, this turn was done incorrectly, too. I sh what I should have done is Mob Skies, use the blue mob for the Deathly Whale after I ban it. So banish the widespread Mob Skies, Deathly Whale, and then Flail. That would put me at one anyway. Oh, wait, no, that would kill me. Yeah, that would kill me because it would. I'd be at two. I'd go down to one and then die to widespread. Hmm. I would have had to block something here. And I would still go down to one. That probably would be the correct thing to do. So block with grasp. Go to three, banish widespread ruin, deathly whale with the mob skies. So widespread ruin's banked. I go down to one, but I'm sending. Seven here. Threatening. Three more off the mob skies and then flail for another one. Have two rune chance for the next turn. The next turn I draw that. But then do they get to keep? What were their blocks? So they blocked. So I used two there. So they take one. They go to four because they can't. Oh, wait, no, the, no, no, no. So they can block whatever with this uh, because I'm only sending one to chant. They probably just take it, goes through, and then they block here and send the four. I don't know. That would have been really interesting to see. I have two rune chants, essentially, going into the next turn, and I had a uh, widespread and banish. They send the scar for scar. I go block, block, block. So I'm at one still. I'm Mav Skies. 
Banish the Deathly Whale. Go to three rune chance. Mob Skies, Deathly Whale. It, the only way they win is if they block out all of my damage. And I die to my blood debt. But if they don't block out all of my damage, then I Funeral Moon, Close Chain with Deathly Whale, Close Deathly Whale Chain. I have two rune chance, and I just win off of that. So, I think... They probably had me if they had seen how that was going to work out for both of those scenarios. Um, I mean, the one where they actually just lost, they just blocked wrong. This was on them. But yeah, so Benji's scary. But as you can see, like it, it, you can you can pull it out. Um, I probably should put in the reduce the rune chance because the reduce could go into arsenal and I can still block stuff because it's only blocking from hand. So that's a consideration. But anyway, thanks you guys for watching. Thanks everyone for being here. Um, let me know what your favorite rune blade is. Uh, any of them, if they've LL'd, whatever. I'm curious. I think probably my favorite is either Chain or Briar, but Vin comes very close. Vin was actually the first hero that I ever mained, and Vis was the first hero I ever played. So Runeblade has a special place in my heart. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. If you like the video, thumbs up, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Uh, and let me know. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, we're in the mirror. Um, the mirror, I think, is pretty okay if you play Vexing and the um, Grimoire. You also play Carrion Husk because they're not going to convert, like, switch to blocking you out. I don't think there's ever a world where Vin just says, I'm playing aggro, never mind, I'm going to play full defense just so your blood debt kills you because they would just get too much value uh, letting the other Vin set up, I feel like. So, I'm not... I think Husk is always the play. And we got first. They chose me to go first. I'm not sure why. Okay, so... Vexing is the only AB on their side other than Dyadic, which is AB2. Banish Deathly Whale, bank the um, Mob Skies. They're breaking it to just send Deathly Whale. I think we'll just block it out since we have the blue. Block out the Arcane. I have a Mob Skies banked. Um... Double block, yeah. Oh. And they're going to creepers. For a blessing, okay. They play yellow, read the runes. Weird. I'm not, I'm not a fan, personally. So we're going to break... Send Deathly Whale. If this hits, I get two rune chance and can send the widespread rune. If it doesn't hit, I still end with one anyway. Or er, no, I end with two because I'll flail. They see at this point they don't have AB because they broke their vexing, where I do because I have their grimoire. So that's something to keep note of. And they're letting it hit. So, I get two. I think I just send the Ruin. And then end on one. They're at a five card hand because they sunk their arsenal. I, I You always block this at this point. I guess not. They They have a strong turn. Banished, and of course I banish off the top the, um, the, what's it called? Funeral Moon, there we go. 
Oh, so they're trying to play the Funeral Moon at end of turn. Not really sure why. Especially with Deathly Whale. Oh, okay. So he's going to Beseech. Pay the one. Shadow Puppetry. Not pay the one. I will not block any of the Rune Chants because I have only Reds. And they're coming for nine. Mm -hmm. Oh, ten. Because of the Shadow Puppetry. Probably block... Ten? Probably block the sh the with the bound or block eleven. I'm thinking block with the bounding, or maybe just take it because we've already taken damage. Yeah, so it's not it's just two damage at this point. The shadow puppetry I'm not too concerned about. Although if they hit something a two ghost, okay. If they hit a two gate off of that, that would have been not good. Two gate would be very bad actually. So we'll put the bounding there. I think we'll probably shadow puppetry to start. Mob skies. Okay, so we're gonna mob skies. They're blocking both rune chance. If they let it hit, oh, it's because I'm just throwing a breakpoint in front of it. Okay, one rune chant. Um, probably, I was thinking flail first, but this is actually better because now I'm threatening lethal. Are they stuck with all reds? Oh, and they only have AB2. See, this is, this is exactly what I was saying. So they only have AB2, so the rune chance just killed them because they don't have more than reds. So against Vincets, if you're... Actually, against anyone that deals arcane, uh, if you're bringing vexing, it should not not be your only source of AB, because vexing you're gonna break pretty often, and after that you're just gonna be burning them out. You're gonna get burned out. Whoever is playing the vexing is going to get burned out. Uh, rune chants are just, I mean, frankly, any arcane damage is just too threatening, especially in blitz. Because the way to think about it is your life totals are half. So if you compare it to like CC value, all of your damage is doubled because obviously your life total is halved. So rune chants essentially are coming in for two um, if you're comparing it again to CC terms. So you can literally pay one to block two damage. And in most cases, you just do that. Um, unless you have, like, obviously a really good setup turn. Or, like, a really good turn afterwards. But if you only bring Vexing and you break it, then you're just taking so much damage. And notice, they didn't use the Scepter of Pain once. So if this was a Grimoire, they would have been able to potentially survive. But it wasn't. So, yep, so Vincent, I feel like is the mirror is much more based on your, like, knowledge of the hero and what's important to block. And then kind of just trying to chain turns together better. Them bringing Dyadic also, I think, was just a wrong move. I think I took one blood debt from Carrion Husk. So, that makes it a five value block instead of their three value block. If it was against like someone like a guardian, I don't think that I bring in Husk because they are much more defensive, but Vincent needs to be aggressive just the way the hero works. So you can kind of anticipate that they're just going to try to be aggressive and you don't have to worry about them playing super defensively.